Same. We'll see, though. We are finally here for the last series of the day. It is Tundra versus Team Spirit. Both of these teams coming off of a multi-hour series. You know, it's they both played like 60-minute-plus games back-to-back. -back. So they're tired, I'm sure. A little bit uh, mentally mind-flayed. Some line drawn. Wait, these are from both. So. Both teams are drawing a similar line. We might get a five-on-five five fight here in a moment. Although Yatoro went top. I mean, you have Phoenix and Mira can go. Okay, yeah, he ends up going disruption. I was like, Mira could go Shadow Poison, which is a lot of like dot damage, but then you're lacking stuns. So, it looks like Tundra are gonna be able to dodge this one out. They get a decent ward here. Plays deeper into the lane. As they're now wrapping back around for the mid lane, they will see everything on the ward as the smoke pops. All right. I think Even everyone knows fighting this. ward visions here. Yeah, they see Mira. They guess right. They're like, okay, there's probably another hero below us. And they are correct. So it's just going to be a slight bounty advantage for Team Spirit. Nine class manages to take the top one. So three for one. Not, not too much of a difference, but... It looks like the they're going to try over. and They've won. offensively body block in the bottom lane to force the wave under the tower and then bring it closer to their own. Mira. Let's get the disruption. Oh, they're actually teleporting in Rubik. They want to try and punish Collapse here. Blood Grenade missed. Okay, it's all right. That's fine. Collapse is very all right with that. Look at that tip. He's like, uh, all right, you TP'd bottom. The wave is going to push by default because it made it into the tower. He lost one melee creep, but now the wave at his tier two. And Mira is, you know, having a little bit of a fight here with the two supports. He's going to have to TP back to the base and he makes it. Blood Grenade not able to kill him. So a lot of that's both Blood Grenades spent from the side of Tundra. You do force this TP, of course, but that is rough. Top lane, though, they're getting aggressive onto Toby since there is no support up here to help him. That was a very... I don't want to say all or nothing because it's not like that ends the game, but that was a win big or lose big kind of play. And unfortunately, they got nothing out of that rotation down there, really. And it's put Spirit in a pretty good spot for these lanes, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, Phoenix is already a super dominant lane hero, and I would say he gets dive now. He can look to play aggressive on a 9 class. He was trying to dodge the stun, doesn't manage to do it, but 9 class can't afford to die. He has no TP, obviously, after using it to, to go bottom in the first place. So, for now, he is uh, very happy on this Sven. He just gets to chill, farm his lane. Bottom lane. Good creep see. secure by White Mon. Yeah, that was cool. With that beautiful new wave of terror, Arcana. Pay to win. I actually have no idea. This Arcana just... has added in a new illusion model as well. Really? Yeah, it's different from all the others. I've asked you this before. Do you remember how many illusions are there in the game? Like 17 or 18 different illusions, I think. Right? <laughs> Not Something quite like that, that many. I don't know. There's Top seven lane. models for illusions. Okay. Both supports getting very low, but pressing their level advantage at the moment as salve after salve gets popped on all these heroes. Trying to reset here. And there's your level two for the Rubik. I mean, the fact that they actually managed to get that much aggression out without Fade Bolt as well is kind of hilarious. So now that Fade Bolt is online, they might be able to maybe find themselves a kill. We'll see. Wow, that is so cool. Cinder Brew is strong. Oh. Mira, you need to be a little bit careful there. Alright, he's doing alright. 
I guess we haven't really talked about mid lane. Should we talk about mid lane at all? Is it worth talking about mid lane? Uh, Thompson doing pretty well, considering this is a counter pick on the less track. Though yeah. I'm not experienced enough in the mid lane to know how exactly this lane should go. But Thompson is known to make wacky things happen in the mid lane, even when he's not supposed to. That's true, that's true. I mean, he's been both playing water on runes. fairly low HP, but yeah, getting the water rune there is actually massive for them. He was going to lose his courier for this. That hurts. He has to walk base. So, good water rune steal. That's massive. Yeah, and part of the reason Maposhka feels comfortable to do that, one, it's like good since they know mid's getting pressured a little bit in this matchup. It's good to do, but he's got some freedom to do it because they had such a good start with Sven just feeling very comfortable being left on his own right now. Yeah. Collapse is going to be very annoying here fairly soon as well, right? You get the more and more levels you get into this Tidebringer, it becomes so difficult to sustain the lane. And eventually, you're just, you won't be able to lane here. Like, the Luna will just back away. Well, speaking of which, disruption into the Torrent. She's going to take a lot of damage trying to block her off into the trees. Doesn't quite get it. Able to make it through. But, ooh, okay, poison stack number four does not connect. Not on my watch. Yeah, raindrop stick getting thrown tons of regen in the form of these tangos. He has to buy more tangos. Like, Pure's being forced to spend a lot of money on regen fairly early. I think that's kind of expected, but Luna is a hero that can, you know, still catch up or, or farm fairly quickly, so it's not hurting him too much. I think both these carries want to hit a critical mass, but Sven has an easier time. Yeah, that's that's your first blood. Eventually, the Phoenix will burn you down. Pure that dying in the bottom grenade. lane. Ooh, pure. Four poison four stacks. stacks. Yeah, Rain that's four enough. poison stacks. Wow, that's quite nice. So two kills across the map as Topson in the mid lane will be forced to coil to get away from this edict. Does manage to grab the shield rune away, so... I mean, that ends up being quite nice. Though. Yeah, well, prior to dying, I was saying both carries doing pretty well and both will jungle pretty quickly. But a big difference between Sven and Luna is that Luna pretty much farms for th two to three items. But Sven, as soon as he has six, has the p potential to just show up and pop his ult and get a kill and then go back to jungling. So you can contribute a lot sooner which can help put your team in a good spot. Maybe they can get Ooh. a return kill on Collapse here. Uh, not quite enough damage, just gonna get him low. Mira close enough. They're hoping that maybe he's, you know, back for the seven minute rune or something there, but Mira hadn't done that quite yet. Mid lane, Laurel trying to put pressure on a Thompson or the tower, make him choose, right? So it's a little bit of chip damage here with that Edict. Only level three, so once he hits, you know, level seven and he gets that fourth point in Edict, it becomes a lot of damage. Yotoro pops that God Strength. We'll just start getting to work on some of these jungle camps. Does have what looks like Phoenix trying to stack up for him as well, or pull potentially. Gotta yeah, be careful. Nine class is here. They're gonna put some pressure onto him, but he's got a lot of health. He's gonna lose a lot of health, but he's fine. So now he's got rotation stacks. in the mid lane. Ooh. They brought both supports to the mid lane. No, okay, just one. But, you know, Thompson pops the coil for this one, tries to finish off Laurel, doesn't quite happen. I'll scratch that idea. think they can secure the rune. Well, I don't know. Do you feel comfortable going for that? 40 health? I guess you got a fairy fire. The greatest tragedy Lost of our the eon. I could feed him a lotus too. If they can get him the eight minute rune with both supports being here, this might be fine. Especially because Coil didn't actually get anything. The thing for Lesh is no one can refill this bottle. He has to like turn to base like immediately and then TP back so that he can be here for the eight minute rune. 
That's like the only way. He's got boots in his backpack. If he turns and just goes straight base and TP's back, I think he'll be here for the eight minute rune. Who's drawing what? Who's this? Uh, Nine class saying, I'll go stack these. You go down, stack those. Yeah, maybe. I have really looked at the stacks at all this game to see if anyone's getting anything done. I mean, you have the Shadow Demon, of course, which is an amazing stacking hero, but he's also been playing on the lane pretty much the whole time, so. Yeah, there's not guess too Phoenix many stacks yet. Stacking. Yeah, there's not too many stacks yet, but I think it will start to pick up here because all your cores are really good at farming stacks on Team Spirit. On Tundra, Puck is okay. Luna, really good. Brewmaster, he can if he needs to, but he'll probably be staying in the lane here. All right. Laurel, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to run to base, drop those boots in, and uh, exactly what you're right. White Mon's going to stack this side. Rubik's going to stack the other side. So they're going to try and get as much efficiency right now out of the map as they possibly can. Let's see if Puck's going to get lucky here with the rune. Oh, he does. It's a regen. And Maposhka tries to dive away, and... It should be able to survive. Has 10 stick charges as well. They get a D ward there in mid. Really nice for 9 class. Maposhka's sticking around though. Oh. Okay. Nothing really going to go down. Oh boy. Yeah, he's got to regen. Does so much so. damage. Yeah, the fourth point edict is nuts. Where are we at on net worth right now? Like who's who's at the top? My guess is Sven. Okay, yeah, it is Sven. So unsurprising, right? Thanks to the amount of kind of CS he's picked up in the lane, but now also having some stacks to clean up. God strength coming off cooldown here in about 10 seconds. So yeah, he's having a good time. Pure yeah, closing in pure, on his mask of madness. Pure. Yeah, he's closer in net worth than I thought he might be after that start, but I think the big difference is the offlaners. Like, Kunkka is at the same net worth as they are, whereas Brewmaster is True. much further down, about a thousand behind. Cool. Nine class will scout Maposhka, forced to go for the dive away, but the Telekinesis plus White Mon's rotation. Yeah, the, the Wave of Terror is going to do work against this Phoenix until the egg is available. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. We're gonna smoke top, see if they can defend this tower. Maybe get a return kill. There is primal split available though. Yeah, you just, you can get the disruption maybe into split, but that doesn't even feel good. You've gotta find the heroes onto the backside and Yatoro comes in, grabs nine class, TP in from collapse as well. There's gonna be the X into the torrent. One more auto attack. He's gonna to pop to the shadow demon. Yeah, that's what ends up happening. So Toby gets out. Lesh solo killed the Venge. I mean, that's a decent enough rotation. Uh, Kunkka can go back bottom pretty easily through the Twin Gate. And That's uh, not too bad. He didn't even use vote for it either. Puck with a refilled bottle, though, might shove in mid and then look to make a rotation of his own. Maybe top, or maybe just clearing this stack. Yeah, I think you just got to farm to your items right now. Look at him send his kobold to scout, guys. Use your kobold. Yeah, they are quite good at scouting. Just a mobile ward. Just look for any stacks to steal. What's the enemy up to? Oh, he's, he's just going to block, block a camp. A Dude, value. Mira, Cinderbrew's going to catch, but he's close enough to the tier 2 tower. They don't want to chase anymore. Marl's like, where's my camp? I only get four gold instead. Of like a hundred, yeah. Or would you prefer 20 gold from having that creep next to you for a full minute? All right, in the meantime, while we're watching that kobold, they take the bottom tower, open up the map for themselves. Maybe they can start looking for pure. I'm the sorry, boat the combo is, is enough damage to get him killed, uh, especially with like a little bit of help from a support. 
Level three fire spirits, quite a lot of damage. Yeah. Like they placed the same ward last time, right? Like super deep on the lane there, right outside the tower. Mm -hmm. This is not one that we see all that often, but the alternative is people place it on the high ground uh, to the right, or they place it on the other side of that tree line in the jungle area. And those ones get scouted quite often. So I like that ward, it's cool. 12 minute power rune, we'll see who wins the 50-50. And this one will go to Laurel. An illusion rule rune, oh my gosh. <laughs> that might actually matter because there's a silence in this game. Maybe he'll get a sick dispel. That That'll true. help him out. Or maybe he gets even luckier and like pops the illusion on the edge of the coil and it teleports him to the other side. That would Dispels. be sick. That would be We'll hype. see that on Reddit later. White Mon about to walk into Maposhka. He, yeah, he's just going to kite this one on top lane, though. Stolen Disruption into a nice Torrent, but Toby's still plenty takey. And he'll just walk away. I'm surprised. Like, what? maybe maybe they didn't think the boat was would kill him, so they're just harassing. I'm not really sure. I think they... I think the timing was just a little off. They were trying to get it to combo with the boat and all that, but they felt it was like a little late. Turns out he actually didn't have enough mana until uh, there was arcane boots near him. So they they're could have just gone here. for it, the kill. A nice swap from, Light Wa from White Mon to save him. They actually prevent the dive chase from the Phoenix as well. So Pierre will get out. White Mon putting the Vengeful Spirit to good use now already. That's the difference Yatoro of is uh, Mormon, man. Sven and Luna, though, too, right? That we were saying yeah. earlier. Sven gets a join. Kills a Vengeful Spirit. Not as good as a Luna kill, but he gets a kill right back to farming. You ain't gonna see a Luna show up for that. Although she does have a pretty big Ancient stack here to farm, so her net worth is gonna jump up. Oh, hell yeah. We like this. That is, what, four? Five stacks. Jeez. That's a lot of creeps. Look at the money. I'm trying to look at the numbers specifically to see how much gold you get. And, and he stacks. Efficient. What a high level Restack. player. See, that's huge. Uh, I want to say right at the beginning of this, he went into that stack with 7350 and came out with 8130. So that's pretty good. That's like almost 800 gold. That's good stuff. And a wisdom rune to boot. You love that. Oh, are we gonna replay this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you, production, for checking my math here. I appreciate that one. This is the important thing. I mean, we are. <laughs> this game is just a farm fest. Let's be real. <laughs> this is the action compared from last series. Oh my lord. We top there some action. Stolen right. disruption. I don't know the damage. With just Dope. two of them. Yeah, they're going to leave pretty quickly. Can he get an X mark on anyone? Nah, it doesn't look like it. Well, maybe. Bottom lane, they're also thinking of fighting. Thompson does have an arcane rune, but... I feel like we're going to be farming for a hot second here, I'll be honest. Well, Collapse did just finish his Aghanims. Maybe... Oh, did Thompson see he finished his Aghanims? The luckiest torn storm in the world. Oh, never mind. Nope, doesn't get him. So what are we what are we looking for here? Because Utoro has blink, has echo save. We're looking for BKB. Gets doesn't get Ooh, the stun on top, and he gets fog at the last second. He gets out, nice lift from 9 class. Stun comes out, a great 3 hero coil. The turnaround damage, though, onto the Sven. They will save him with the disruption. Great swap out. Collapse the Torrent Storm. Try to just take on these heroes, but they're too tanky. They've got too much control, and Yatoro will turn to try and clean up Toby. He almost gets him. The cleave from the Kunkka is not going to happen either, as Thompson will chase him down. Ends up being a disaster for Team Spirit. That's a stolen god strength on nine class, by the way. He was clicking. 
Never mind. Eggs get dropped. Everyone's just gonna back out. That was some fast finger reactions from Tundra. Otherwise, that fight looks totally different. Like, we saw Sven, even after being controlled up, swap, stuff like that, still almost kills Brewmaster, almost kills some supports. So if he wasn't controlled so much, and he does get that initial stun without being lifted, then that fight looks very different. That is where just having really good reaction times can sometimes win you fights. They find themselves an extra one as well. Yeah, if the Stormhammer connects on a puck, it's an immediate torrent boat follow-up, right? Like, he probably dies. So, taking the puck out of the fight immediately would have uh, made things quite different. The fact that this mid lane tower still stands is very good for Tundra, right? You've got this, this Lashrak who wants to try and bring this tower down. Four points Edict, obviously, you buy seven. He's now level 12 and still hasn't been able to finish the job. Puck's had a great game. Yeah, the tower's pretty healthy, too. Yeah. Oh, speaking Oil. of which, they're just going to try and dive your coils out, but you got to be careful. Great disruption. The bait, though. The rest of Spirit are on the backside. There's the blank. The Dragon Tail Thompson on the run. He's got an orb in one second, but he can't survive. Yadro will chop him down. Gets his revenge. And now your mid tower is certainly dead. You can buy yourself a little bit of time if you want to fort, but you will not get a refresh. So. Okay. They will pop the fort. Yeah, totally. I think it's worth it versus a Leshrac, because usually the fort smoke. lasts long enough that most of Edict is wasted. This is a sick find on Pure. What a read. Thinking that they're going to be mid, but instead an immediate smoke to the bottom lane and another aggressive ward place just outside the tower. Now a little higher. They'll never find it this time. <laughs> I mean, this is what you said, right? Sven joining with God Strength. The last like five, six seconds of God Strength get the kill of the Luna there. And then he backs back to farming. Mid lane, looking to go on top of the Kunkka. Does have an X onto himself. He is taking a ton of damage and ends up just dying. Thanks to the silence out from the puck. Haystrun hey, from Laurel will get him to safety. Man, they still didn't lose their tower. That X. <laughs> yeah. What? The, what the fort the was worth there? it. Oh, well, it just bugged out, I guess. Yeah, the Fortify, pretty good. Kept their tower alive. It does mean the next time you win a fight and you get there, you will get the tower. But like you said, they kept it alive for a long time, which Lushrak, he ain't happy with that. He wants to open up the map for his team. Yeah, it kind of baits them into a bad fight, right? And that's good. Good stuff for them. Closing out on the Bloodstone here for Laurel. That's going to be massive. BKB, the next item here for the Luna. Maposhka has Tranquil's Midas. He had a taste of scaling last Hell time. Hell like, oh, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's do it again. One that Midas. I mean, I'm... <sighs> He's apparently not a believer in DY's first item, Nullifier. It worked really well against Brewmaster. That was kind of a sick item. I hadn't ever considered that as a way to, to deal with the Cinder Brew, but oh, they just smoked right under a ward. So they know something's going on here. Collapse almost being solo killed up here. He is solo oh. killed. Oh. Okay, that, that Horn Storm might have saved them. Amplify damage here for Laurel. Yeah, Puck's doing a, a ridiculous amount of damage with that early Witchblade. And uh, it's fantastic at being able to whittle down these like tanky cores. Also gets a Grove Bow, so even more. They're looking for Thompson. A lot of heroes coming up here. They're going to see the Illusory Orb. I don't think they're going to be able to success it's tough. Like, easily find him. He's going to keep going deeper into the jungle and eventually just TP, I'd imagine. Cut one more yeah. wave. At this point, if you're killed back here, you kind of, you almost don't care because of how much space is created. Oh, what a smart call to just cut it short, TP out right away. Yeah. Knows he showed uh, himself. Oh, I was like, how did Nine Class get up there with an X? Okay, yeah, he stole X. He's using it, his blink dagger as a scouting tool right now. Very good. Um, How close to Radiance? We're still a little, far, far, little bit away, but he's closing in. Luna BKB being delivered on the courier right now, so that's quite nice. Timed up with the bloodstone on the other side, however. 
Radiant Scan connects. They know there are heroes over here. Is they're gonna smoke up onto the high ground? The smoke pops. Yadro has to BKB and quick. He's got God Strength. He could just turn around. They dodge out the stun here on the puck. Laurel trying to find his opening into this fight. Pops the blood some of the spear vessels on top of him. He's falling. And fast disruption. defensive disruption will give him a little bit of time. And that's all he needs. Now Collapse comes in with the boat, does not connect. It looks like Tundra able to disengage for now. But you're trying to disengage against a Kunkka. They're looking for more. Pure gets caught from an X great to man to dodge this. Oh, but here comes Yadro. Swap back. A great stun back the other way. Another disruption. The egg is down as well. They're doing their best on Tundra to get away. And it looks like it's going to be enough. Another X, not gonna connect there, and now Collapse. He's gotta drop the Torrent Storm, but the Chain Stuns are there, and he's gonna be the first one to fall somehow, as Laurel also bleeding on the backside to the puck. As Thompson's not gonna give up this chase. He's got a Waiting Rift in one, he gets him. Yadro in the trees, he dodges the stun! He's looking back the other way. Will he dive the base? He's thinking about it, he's gonna go for this. All right. No more chase. They get themselves plenty out of this engagement. A fight that started at the enemy tier two. That was <laughs> so much was used and no one died. Like this is where we started. BKBs get popped, ultimates get used and kited. And in the end, it's just like a slow rundown. Both sides just having so many saves between disruption, swap. Uh, so it's just a lot of kiting going on. But in the end, Puck being able to just keep going with the Witchblade, poking people down, blinking, Illusory Orb, chasing. A really good swap here by White Mon. If they killed Pure here, I think it would look different, right? Because they end up over committing coming for this kill on Pure. I mean, it was Toby Cyclone collapse right on the X to the Luna. If that doesn't happen, he gets X stunned and then Torrent stormed immediately. So it's, yeah, they, they don't turn the fight that way for sure. It was just a really good series of plays. Everyone on Tundra playing this super well. The swap from White Mon, the Cyclone from the, the Brewmaster. And then Rubik actually stealing some really sick spells in this fight too. Like he stole Stormhammer, which is what was the, the big stun, right? As Sven initiates, they take a two hero Stormhammer to the face. Mm -hmm. So, mid lane, fuck. Gets the blink out, he's fine. And they even gets too. the shield rune. Is under attack. During that replay, they did do the Tormentors. So we've got it on Collapse, which is a pretty good shard. And so is uh, Rubix, who, who got it from the side of Tundra. Yeah, those are all really good. Maybe we'll see Tidal Wave come into play. Smoke bottom. We'll see Luna's Illusions pushing mid or pushing bottom. This is a really oh, sick gank if they find Toby here. He's gonna come right through the trees and just see five heroes staring at him. The damage is it there? It's not. He gets the split. The cycle immediately. Toro. Now the real question: Can you stick on top of the Earth Panda? That's the only one you have to chase. But the TPs are coming through. He gets out. Wow. They didn't want to commit too much for just a Brewmaster kill, but it it lets the split happen. Like they could have torn storm, they could have used a uh, boat, he could have BKB'd. You don't want to use those cooldowns on a single pickoff if you don't have to. If you get that pick quickly, you can threaten Roche, but now you get nothing. Luna is taking your high ground in the process. So this ends up being so costly. You have a 6,000 gold advantage now as a full Kaya Sanj is done on Topson. And with the puck here, I mean, he has a lot of options. He could play greedy, go for a Parasma early. He could grab a Yule Scepter or just even a BKB to play around. I mean, just like one defensive item, I think, is all he'll probably need, but... Oh, great read from Laurel. They chain stun Topson? He's going to be able to phase shift a lot of this. He has an orb and a blink in one second. The chase from Notoro, though. He's just going to be able to continue to kite these guys out. There's the coil. No way he's out of this one. Out. Surely, right? Oh. Okay. Okay, I thought he had blink. Looks like he was not up yet. 
So they commit everything this time for the puck, a much better kill. And now you can go for the Roshan. You did pop God Strength for this. Well, maybe not. They're instead gonna find nine class on the bottom side here. Good read from Collapse and Laurel. As they make quick work of the Rubik. Double kill for him. Oh, he didn't even make God Strength for it. My bad, I thought he still had it. All right. Well, uh, you have a Luna problem on your high ground. She will be forced to back away at some point here. But they're looking for a swap potentially on the Maposhka. They're thinking about it. White Mon's gonna go into the Eclipse. The stun, they got him. Really sick read. And now Collapse, you pull them in. Maybe you don't want to be this close to Pure on the run, but no, sir. Pure's got that 20 talent. Those Lucent Beams are brutal. He's now very deep in the base. He will give up his life for this one. White Mon, well, he surely dies for this one, right? At some point, I, doesn't look he, he like doesn't it. He doesn't get. He doesn't. He gets out. Oh my goodness! You get Aegis. You lose two in your base, and you can't kill the Luna. Tower's almost dead. 163 health left on that tier three. Tundra's actually doing. That was so a really good cool swap eclipse kill. Yeah. Very cool swap eclipse kill to open that up. Radiant and I think Mira Mira went for they were trying to get both. Like they felt they felt they should have both. So he looked at the Venge, but actually maybe needed the ultimate on the Luna, and then maybe that is the Luna kill. I mean Laurel as well. Like Laurel was just like killing the Vengeful Spirit on the backside, you know, full edict and everything, and was like, yeah, surely the Luna's gonna die, right? Nope. Just walks away Aww. under BKB. I guess he teepeed and had to go for it, but yeah, it's uh, looking pretty good here for, for Tundra. 8,000 behind, but they do manage to get on top of Pure. He has no BKB. Okay, I didn't say anything about it looking quite good for them. That is a lot of gold. So that's a big death for the Luna. 70 seconds, no buyback. They've got Aegis. They're going to chase after White Running down for some towers. Great swap. But yeah, it looks like they do manage to still find it. White Mon should burn down here. Nice torrent store uh, or tidal wave to pull him back. So a couple of kills going the way of Spirit. Especially with this Luna being down, they can play hyper aggressive. She's a ton of their damage. Radiance top tower is it looks like they're gonna opt for the top towers. Maybe go for a tormentor steal. I don't think the timing. I mean, you could, but you'll have to fight. You'll have to fight for it if that's yeah. what you want to try to do. Thompson's just cutting waves. He's going to go for the tier three. Dude, he's actually going to get it. Dude, okay. They have just been split pushing and ratting them to oblivion, and it's working. They get the tier three. Their Luna's back in 10 seconds. Dude, Thompson has been playing this puck really well. I, I I mean, same with same with the the Luna, right? Both of them have done positioned super well on the map. Nine class, nice stolen X there to keep himself alive as collapse again. Maybe he pulled in the hero he did not want. Foil does connect. X trying to get collapse out of here doesn't even get close. A great chase. Now Yatoro needs to be careful. Stolen boat does not connect, but it gives him a little bit of extra movement speed. The egg on the high ground will get scouted. They're gonna try and burst it down in time, but the miss chance actually keeps him Poshka alive. He goes for the dive away. He's gonna be all right. Don't feel like they even had to commit that much for that. Coil, which is not the longest cooldown, but they still have Bruce split, BKB on Luna. So pretty good find for them. Yeah, almost got more out of it too. So it looks like Thompson's going Octarine. That was not on my list of items that I thought he might go for, but it is a lot of overall stats. Having more spells to just throw around in this fight is always fantastic. Yeah, I think we've seen how much space he's made as well. Uh, just constantly moving around the fight and they don't have the greatest lockdown, which means the more often he has phase shift up, 
the harder and harder he is to kill, and he can just keep causing all these problems around the map. It's really funny watching Thompson and Laurel like voice, like chat with each other. Like every time one of them does like a kind of like a funny prediction play, they, they just voice line each other. Radiance top tower is so, under attack. Smoked up. They were looking for someone on Spirit here, split pushing, unfortunately, for Tundra. They did get the TP on out, so their smoke doesn't look like it's going to connect, at least at the moment. Yeah, it's going to expire. Nine class still has the stolen boat. Looking for an Aghanim Scepter on the Rubik. That is not something we see all that often, but... All right, just wanting to have more spells. A scythe completed on Laurel, though. That is a nice pickup. As the ages. I mean, there's fires. some really great steals this game. Pretty much all of Kunkka's spells are good. Sven stun is good. Stealing Sunray, Spirits, Egg, Leshrat Q, Disruption, Shadow Demon Alt. There's like so many good spells. So, Nine Class definitely the kind of player who's got the fast reactions we saw earlier. You can get the steals and then just hang on to him for a long time. Like right now he's got Ghost Ship, which is a good steal. Yeah. And it looks like they're, they're trying to fight around it. They're pretty grouped up. I say as he turns around to uh, go back here. What's over here? Oh, grabbing the gem from his courier. No, oh, that's kind of important. All right. Just MKB done on Yotaro. So he is realizing that eventually that butterfly is probably coming. Uh oh, <laughs> I didn't know you could get stuck here. How can he? Look how wide open that space is. This is ridiculous. Where's the realism in this game? Yeah. A man with the strength of a god, but can't step one foot to his left. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. White Mon has his agonims. We'll get to see the eighth new illusion model. Passing the gem over to Toby. I mean, this fight's important. If you want to fight right in front of the base of Team Spirit, Luna will definitely take, let's see, the bottom rack's already open, but you can probably take two sets for how long the death timers are, if not more, depending how well the fight goes. So they've managed to pull the gold to Tundra's side. Um, it's been, uh, it's, you know, kind of a steady, hold uh, I guess since then but I'm trying to look again at, at who's scaling for late game we saw the Midas picked up on the the Phoenix earlier so he's like yeah I'm ready I'm gonna go late game I'll get a Midas we see the Aghanim Scepter queued up on you know the the Rubik are we in for another like 70 minute game here are we halfway through this game right now you say it like 70 minutes or the exception. It's just like, oh yeah, it's a 70 minute game and maybe sometimes it's 30 minutes. Ooh. <laughs> that is true. I think there's probably more 60 minute games of Dota in this tournament than there are 35 minute games of Dota. I mean, with these lineups, if you win a big fight, <laughs> both teams take building so fast, technically it could end at any time. But I think yes. because of that, you give so much respect to the enemy as well. Because you're like, ooh, if I if I, we lose this fight, you know, that could be it. So that kind of stuff does tend to drag on the games. With that in mind, we do have a smoke out. Fairly long Roche respawn at 2 minutes 20 seconds. But they're making their way over, trying to see if it is up. They're in a good position. Like, if you are the one defending the Roche, then it's much easier to get a good egg. Smoke pops on Laurel there. He instantly blinks out without seeing who's on the high ground. So, good response. Again, he's got this scythe. He hasn't really been able to put it to good use yet, but if they see the puck, you can kill him under a blink scythe into split earth, right? They'll have the tools to actually kill Thompson. There's not really a... I guess the only thing you can do is if the Venge is close enough to go for the swap. But here we are under the high ground, pure will crack their final fortification. Reminder, Thompson took a tier three already, so there is no more forts for Spirit. Well, this position so awkward. Oh, speaking of Thompson, just goes in, coils up this Sven. That is definitely a little awkward, but they managed to walk away. Coil now on cooldown. 
definitely thought more would result from that. I thought they thought Tundra found a good fight there. But I guess Puck's a little too fast, so the rest of the team was still further behind. In the end, mission success as well. They didn't need to win a fight there. Their goal was to force Team Spirit away from the Roche position, which if Team Spirit had been lucky, it would have been a fast Roche. They take it, they come back, defend. You know, maybe you lost a tower or a barrack, but you have Roche, so you can go force a big fight and try to equalize, if not get more. But unlucky on the Roche spawn, Tundra force him back. Now they're sitting in Roche waiting. <laughs> maybe Spirit will be able to do the same now. They're pushing out mid and bottom. Yeah, I feel like with Roche spawning in 25 seconds, T Tundra in a pretty good position here to be able to take this. Like, we know Lesh can accomplish a lot. Nine class with a really aggressive blink in the mid lane. They actually managed to find the Lesh. A great swap in. He's going to need help. The Bloodstone's already been popped. There's going to be the disruption to try and keep him alive, but he is completely surrounded. Laurel, he's going to go down. Yataro turns his attention over to Toby's losers. He cancels the primal split. He's out. BKB will protect him from the coil as Collapse now trying to find Pure. There's the Torrent Storm coming through. Can they keep him locked down enough? No, he cannot. And the Sunray on the backside trying to make some space. He gets a Satanic off, but the damage is too much. Another swap out from White Mon will keep Pure at bay. Mira, good disruption aggressively. Collapse onto the backside, cancels the TP on nine class, gets the kill, three dead on Spirit. Maybe four now as Mira will get ran down. A beautiful fight from Tundra. And again, no fortifications. They're just gonna call I it. They're gonna go it. straight for tier fours. The rare 37 minute game. You said it, man. If any team wins a fight, high ground goes real quick. They get the hex, they get the stun. Do they have the save here for the buck? The disruption. I'm sorry, the, the telekinesis gets him out. Laurel uh, just gets destroyed. The Scotty damage from Pure is way too much. That is a dieback on your Lashrak. They're gotta find a way to kill this Luna. She is the only way that they finish off this game. No Sven, no Lesh. Pure backing off for <laughs> now. Wipe being on. killed by these Luna delusions. Yeah, well, they might have found more. Maposhka gets caught, silent stunned up as well. He's dead. Buyback at the ready. White Mon with his illusion. Puts an aggressive swap in. Grabs collapse. There comes the boat. Pure trying to finish off the Kunkka. Nice disruption again. But Topson's in the fountain just farming your supports. The pullback from the Shadow Demon. There's just not much that you can do. It's looking all over in this game. Collapse, trying to prevent the creeps from getting into the base. They pop the fort here. It doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Where's the throne? No, they don't have, they're not going to have backdoor soon. Oh, can Pure do it? It's really close. Oh, Sven's up. They're trying to keep him back, but no, backdoor does not make it in time. Really good attempt there, but it's a little too late. Tundra grabbing game number one here in this series.